Hello everybody, Savat here, and I'm going to be playing some Eve Echoes. Now in Eve Echoes, my name is Doom Piggy, as we can see here. This is my information. I've been playing this for a bit of time now, and I've never actually done a video because I really didn't know. There's a lot of people out there that are doing really cool videos and everything already, and I've actually gotten a lot of ideas for what I do off of their videos. Uh, so today I've actually got a particular idea that I was going to try out a, a fit on my ship. So my ship that I run here, this is the Harbinger prototype, and I really like this ship. My startings in EVE Echoes were a bit rough. I started playing the game. I played EVE Online a long time ago. And whenever the mobile game came out, it was probably about a week or two after launch. Uh, so that being said, I am going to be hitting Tier 8 hmm. at some particular point. I don't want to look at my money. I want to look at my skills. Yeah. So I'm a little bit behind. I think your most people are going to be hitting tier 8 relatively soon. And I've still got, it looks like, four days left on mine. Maybe? No, nine days. Four hours and 29 minutes. So more than a week. And I think your average person is going to be hitting it within a couple of days. Now, anyhow. So basically I saw this fit off of uh, somebody who was watching streaming and the fit was pretty good. They were able to do a lot of different things. One of the things I did notice is they actually run a reactive armor hardener but they were fighting against lasers. So I put this thing on here anyway. It's going to adjust its defenses based off of what you have. Normally this isn't my, my fit that I run on this particular ship. I actually shield tank this thing. As far as the rigs go, these things are super expensive, so I actually just have prototypes on here of this particular one. I have a tier one that I actually purchased. This one here is what makes my other build work, and I was able to get away with it with just the prototype instead of having to buy the tier one, so I've never really bothered upgrading it, and I'll show you guys that fit one particular day. And down here we have your usual I've got damage, I've got accuracy fall off, and I've got activation time. And that's pretty normal, I would say. In here right now, I'm actually running a Mark V uh, tracking disruptor. I've got one interruptive stasis webifier. Those definitely need some upgrades. An appear medium energy nosferatu. And right now I'm actually running a Mark VII Valkyrie. I'll go back and forth on the ones these, these in here. Uh, since I'm going to be doing some Galente missions, they're actually known to have more of a shield tank, and I am using lasers against shields. That's not so great, but it'll, it'll be fine. But this little guy here will help just do that tad bit more of damage if I'm in range. 28 DPS is negligible, so this guy I don't even pretend. So I, this ship itself is doing 619.76 DPS. If this guy helps out any, fantastic. If not, we don't really care. This number here is actually pretend, 648.27. However, it is more realistic than most of the ships. Most of the ships you're going to be flying outside of your drone control range. My drone control range, as you can see, is 28 km. My optimal range is 18 km. Accuracy fall off is 8.56. Normally I'm going to try to stay within the 20 km range. So this does mean that this guy will be able to apply his full DPS. So it's not really as pretend on this particular ship as it is on others that fight at much longer ranges or if I was actually using the long range fit on this. This guy here, it's not even worth having. Most of the time the reason you have it in there is just in case something does come up on you. Down here I have a C-type medium armor wrapper. This Hansen 800 millimeter reinforced steel plate. This is one of the things on the fifth they use that I don't use. I've never really actually used these things. Um, I hear they're pretty good in PvP for, for quick bursts, but normally I actually run this thing with a shield tank, like I was saying, not armor tank. We do have the sparkly, and this is going to change its resistance types based off of what we're fighting against. I am running a basic heat sink. This could use some upgrades. 
and I do have a Sitham C type medium afterburner. All in all, this thing is getting 61976 DPS at about 20k range. It's not going to be very quick. In my other build, I don't even actually run an afterburner. Uh, the shield doesn't matter, we don't use it. This is basically what matters for this. We do have a very big explosive hole here. Even with adding in this, that's still going to be bad, but I believe these guys are going to do mainly thermal and kinetic. So our resistances should beef up here. I think they have a little bit of explosive, but not too terribly much. Uh, targeting. I can lock six units. Eh. I mean, it's a battle cruiser, what'd you expect? And navigation. We are slow, 209 milliseconds. I don't have a lot of skills in this. I can get this up more, and I do plan to as my battlecruiser skills actually do start to improve. That being said, let's go ahead and take a look at those skills. Currently right now, for lasers, this uses medium. I do have medium five. I do not have advanced medium five or expert medium laser operations. Medium laser upgrade is actually not leveled up to 5 either. I did just finish medium laser upgrade. This was a 15 day skill and I've started working on the expert medium laser upgrades. I'm going to get this to level 3 and then level 4 is going to take quite some time so I'm actually going to go back and try to finish up some of these. Maybe even get the advanced, advanced medium laser operation so I can get into expert here as well and just finish up some of these before I get the experts completed. What else do we have here? Engineering. My engineering skills are also very lacking. For Battlecruiser, I have four and three. These definitely need a big upgrade. But I'm working on my damage first. For this, the other skill, Battlecruiser Command is four. I don't even have advanced Battlecruiser Command or Expert. So again, I need to work in there. Um, for defense, my armor operation is only four. Advanced armor operation is three. Armor hardening is five. I don't even have any advanced armor hardening. Again, another place where my skills do need some work. And defense, battle cruiser is at four and three. Now, like I said, normally I do shield tank this. My shield is in a very similar sort. I haven't really focused too much on defense as of yet. Now. Also, looking into everything, I didn't start off with lasers. When I first started playing this game, I was using missiles, so I do have a ton of missile skills. And then I kind of transitioned out of missiles into drones and started training up drone skills. I uh, got quite a few, and then ended up losing my drone boat to a gate camp. And when I lost my drone boat, I decided I wanted to try something new. And so I migrated over to lasers. As you can see, I never even really used small lasers. I just went straight into training all the medium lasers. And since I've done that, it's probably been about a month, maybe a little bit more, that I've been in this particular ship now. Maybe a little bit less, but around a month. Because I know, again, for example, this particular skill took me 15 days, and I've been in it for the entire time, and I trained up all the other laser skills as well. Now, we went ahead and gone over the fit here, which, again, not my fit, but I wanted to go ahead and try it out. So what I did was I accepted super soft drink. I know, it's not going to be anything major. Oh, we just got expert lasers. That's going to increase my damage by another 2%. Woo! I think I went up like 10 points. And how's long till the next one? Next one is another six hours. It'll go up another 2%. So that'll actually put this probably when that's done at about 635, maybe. All right. Let's go ahead, clear that out, undock, and get started. Alright, 
so first here, I'm actually just gonna... Normally, most people would not warp in at zero, and I wouldn't recommend warping in at zero, but I'm pretty sure the first wave of this is literally just gonna be a few ships. And with my DPS being up close like that, should be able to take them out no problem. Now let's go ahead and set orbit to 18. Yeah, we only got a couple of ships in here right now. get started moving and we're just gonna let this kind of fire out whatever it wants to as you can see here with the afterburner I'm not really going that fast this particular point there's almost no reason to actually use it I do want to go ahead and take you out next if possible I think you can yeah just die So the destroyers and the frigates I do want to prioritize, but again, like I said with this particular wave, I'm not really that concerned. I do want to start getting away, because the next wave is going to spawn. Turn this off now. Now, see, I'm sitting at 27 km. I'm still actually doing damage. Not nearly as much. Um, one of the things I can't do with this as well is use the targeting disruptors. The targeting disruptor, especially on these smaller ships when they don't quite have as much range, is going to reduce the actual range and their accuracy. I'm not moving fast enough for the accuracy to really matter, but the range will if I just end up outranging them. Like for example, if they're using, and again with these Galente missions, if they're using snub noses, they're not going to be hitting me at all. Now, I prefer this over the Webifier because normally I'm not within Webifier range. Now, as you can see, I reduced my speed by quite a bit here, just so I wouldn't go completely flying outside of their range, and they're still, they're still not moving very quickly on me. All right, he's about to die, so I'm gonna blow my speed up again to max. I do want to get a little further away, just to take a look at what we're dealing with here. Alright, this doesn't look like anything either. So now I'm going to go ahead and readjust. I actually don't want to be firing yet. I'm, I don't think I'm within good enough range to make a difference here. I did use the afterburner. My shields are dying. So it looks like these guys are going to be coming in first. Let's go ahead and start shooting them. 25 should be fine. I don't need this anymore. All right. I do want to start getting out of here again because I don't know what's going to be on the next wave. So None of these are elites. If there's no elites in the pack, I'm not even not even scared. Um, not yet. If they do spawn in a ton of ships, which can be done, then a ton of ships are, are going to be very scary as well, especially if they have warp jammers or anything like that on there. So I do want to 
kind of stay away because a warp chamber could ruin my day. Alright, so we're sitting at 30. As you can see at 30, I'm not doing any damage. Now a lot of times you wouldn't want to approach, but honestly, I'm such a big target, it doesn't really matter. Alright, so approaching is going to, if he's approaching me, we're now moving directly at each other, which is going to help my lasers actually hit better. I'm now going to turn. Okay. So in this particular one, we do have a bunch of elites. I am aligning. Put on our shiny. Let's focus fire this guy. He should go down pretty quick. Still is taking quite a bit of time. Okay. My armor is holding. Let's zoom out here a little bit, just so we can get an idea. Not bad. Alright, so now I'm out of Weber range again. Looks like we only got a couple of uh, elite racks. One of them may have good loot. I didn't see any type of uh, warp jammers on there. I can turn that off. Let's take a look at the ships. One, two, three, four, five, six. We have six ships. Okay. We can just start locking up. Now, one thing about this that I gotta do, I don't have any skills trained up in my electronic warfare as of yet. So, this thing has an optimal range of 33.50, it'll be at 50% effectiveness, so about 10%. So any of these guys I can actually choose, I would choose, I guess in this particular case, this guy looks like the most dangerous. So hopefully that'll just prevent him from hitting us at some higher ranges. These Nemesis should be using missiles, but I don't think they do. I haven't really seen any missiles coming in. 
We got a guy over there. Now my alignment with the station actually has me running at a trajectory that's crosswise to them. So even though I don't get much help from that, and again, I'm still not running the, the afterburner, there was no need to. These guys should just pop like grapes. Nemesis have like nothing for health, but again, if they were using those missiles, they could be very dangerous. So sitting at 38, I'm not going to hit this guy. So now I'm going to go ahead and turn on this afterburner. I was at 209, which is my base speed. I'm going to try to actually get in here a little bit and loot. I don't know if there's another wave to this particular one or not. I mean, there might be. One of the things you can do too is orbit your loot at like 5 and that way your ship won't actually come to a complete stop once you get within range. So if you're actually worried and have other ships on the battlefield and still want to maintain velocity Orbiting is definitely a good way, and then when you do loot, you can pick up your loot, and you're still sitting at speed. Now it's about time for this guy to go. And just in case, I'm going to approach the station. Nope, we do not have another wave. Alright, so all in all, this first section was absolutely a joke. I might have even actually just been able to warp in, stay at the base level, and tank pretty much all of those ships. If I was going to be tanking all of those ships, though, and not doing some type of maneuverability game... I probably would take off the afterburner and put on a, not the reactive, but the adaptive, just to kind of give some more. Yeah, that guy probably helped out quite a bit. I do like the extender here. Now see, I did this one here because whenever I loot, you see how I'm coming to a stop now? So if I pick another one and loot, I actually have to build back up my speed again. Which actually does show, uh, slow everything down. Where if I actually just go to orbit, and then orbit at a amount less than 10, 10 is the actual amount where you can actually get the loot, then it shouldn't actually slow my ship down, and whenever I start moving to the next loot container, I will continue my momentum and not have to worry about slowing down. With these battle cruisers, they're extremely slow. And so whenever you are extremely slow, you, you really don't want to make anything any more slow than you have to. That being said, I actually did enjoy the armor plate. The armor plate did do pretty good. I think with better skills it would do even better. It does take quite a bit of cap to actually activate. But using it at the beginning of the battle there, once you start taking a little bit of damage, does allow you to repair your armor. And, uh... Repair your armor as well as not take any additional damage while you're doing so. So that's pretty cool. Now again, this is a tier 6 mission, 
And this particular battleship is a tier 7, so it really shouldn't have any issues whatsoever doing this particular mission, Re almost regardless of your fit. And I've got some decent gear. It's not perfect, but my skills are coming along, so I am doing a very nice amount of damage as well, which makes me not as scared to have the smaller ships uh, on me, where in a lot of other cases, that would actually be very dangerous. Another thing about these particular lasers is because they are the, the pulse, their tracking speed is actually pretty decent. So when things do get close up on me, I don't have much of a issue shooting them. Where if I was actually using the beam lasers, which the beam lasers I can get up to hitting at 60 plus km away. However, in those particular situations, if anything does get close on you, they have piss poor tracking. And the tracking itself is, is just, it's abysmal, and you would have to warp out. And if you do get warp jammed, there's literally nothing you can do except for depend on your one little drone. And if they can out-tank that, then you're screwed. All right. Uh, I don't want to do that quite yet. I do have these other loot containers that I can grab. I don't really know if I need them. Cargo hole's already pretty full. I think majority of it's that. Um, these two are hot garbage. Not gonna sell for anything. This might sell for, eh, about a million. These, there's no way they're worth anything. 8,000, yeah. 7,000, if we're lucky. Smuggler, 58,000. A thousand isk, woo! And a medium armor wrapper. Hmm, I wonder if their price went up. That's actually saying it's worth about a million. I don't think that's right. In this particular one, we made about a million in bounties. Now the rest of the cruiser loot and everything, a lot of people don't bother picking this stuff up, but... I do, I figure if I'm doing the mission, then I can crunch it down and make some isk. Uh, it's the only way I have of really making isk. I'm not invested in anything else as far as making profit, so... Every little bit does help me. Now the bad thing about that is with these particular ships, they are extremely slow. Now as you can see, since I didn't do my trick, I'm coming to a stop. I got another 2 million isk, roughly, in bounties. And then we just have the cash container left after this. So that was wave one. I believe this is going to be about a hundred more jumps to get to wave two. Company factory, we'll seven game. jumps, communicate. Okay, with space station official. Then another 12 jumps, loot the cargo container, come back. Alright, so I've got 12 jumps after this. A total of 19 jumps after the communication. Oh boy. 
And so that being said, probably at this particular point, I will uh, cut this out. All right. So I'm back now. We just got actually got to the station uh, to where the next one's going to be. Now, in this particular case here, I'm not 100% sure what to expect. I haven't done this mission in quite some time. One of the reasons why I kind of wanted to do it again. So I'm not going to warp to zero. I'm going to warp, warp to about 30, 27, 30 in that particular range and Warp drive active. we'll keep in mind from there exactly what we want to do we're gonna warp out or I'm sorry we're going to scroll out until we just have a reticle for our, our ship here because I want to kind of see what I'm looking at. Okay. So we do have quite a bit here. I'm going to approach the station. I did not mean to hit lock on all. Let's uh, start unlocking. Unlock all this crap. Alright, we're heading the opposite direction of them. That's fine. The elite should come in. We can actually turn this off for the time being. And let's slow down. If we disrupt this guy, that should help mitigate some of the damage. We're starting to get within range, so we're starting to do damage back to him. We have one elite. And an elite sniper. Okay. Let's start locking up this guy. And lock this guy. Now we're aligned, but we're at 36%, so that means we still do have to approach maximum speed in order to uh, actually warp out if we do need to. What I'm doing by... Um, I turned off the auto lockback because I do have some that are going to be hitting me from farther away, and I want to make sure I'm hitting the ones that are closest first. And as you can see, my poor drone here hasn't even done anything as of yet. He's going in now, but it's probably a bit too late. But just approaching the station, which I came from, which is away from them, even moving at 36%, I'm allowing them to catch up and staying out of range of a majority of them. Not really having to use any type of capacitor or shield, and this is going to put me further away for the next spawn. 
I am going to start boosting up. And we're going to go ahead and lock those two. And we're going to set orbit and turn around now. Now whilst turning around is when I'm going to face my most damage. I do not want this to continue to fire. Let's actually turn on our armor mitigator. Every hit should be helping boost up its uh, resistances to the proper things. Okay, we're going to go back up to full speed, but still not using our afterburner. We should start being able to hit now, but it's not going to be very good hits. One thing I do want to take a look at is, am I close to any loot? I'm close to the cash container. We're actually fine right here. Um, we're 56 km off the point. We can go ahead and lock up all of these. Slow down again a little bit. Let's do some armor wrapping. Alright, so if these guys' optimal range is 30k, 30km or so, well then they shouldn't really be able to hit me. This guy is moving very slow. I don't want to fight you here. Let's go ahead and speed this up a tiny bit. Now again, the next wave is going to be coming along. So I really don't want to be close to the center. We're 64km off the center now, so I'm kind of confident that we're good enough. Thirty-seven. Let's approach this guy head on. He seems to be trying to get away, pull me back. Um, now if I had a tracking computer on, I would be using that to try to get some good shots in on him, because he is definitely trying to pull me back. We're at 52. I might be able to get some weak hits. Nah, it doesn't look that way. Thirty-four. So if we look here, about thirty is going to be where I'm doing fifty percent damage. So I should be able to hit here, but just not very well, and I'm not going to do anything for damage. Thirty-four. 
Yeah, he's taken off. We're at 29 km away. This is not where I want to be. He has pulled me all the way back. Right. So round two is going to be a little spicy. Let's change off targets. Let's turn off our afterburner. Interesting. There's quite a few of them, but they're not really... We're not really doing much. We'll let the Elite come in. It looks like the Elite itself doesn't have any type of afterburner. Let's zoom out here and take a look at this. And that is a lot of ships. But they're all tiny. The Elite does have one of those uh, shield hardeners. Uh, we can go ahead and kill the Elite now. There's not going to be anything to stop us. He's well within optimal range. Uh, we have an elite thorax left, and the rest of these are crap. Okay. I still want to pay attention to what ships are closer. Oh no, look at me. I'm all messed up. So sitting here at roughly 30 km, they can't do nothing. I mean, they haven't done anything. This Elite, I would rather have my Tracking Disruptor on him. If the Elite has some cannons on them that are faction-based, they'll probably do a majority of the damage if they do hit. 
So we'll try to stop that. The rest of these guys are just in for a bad day. There's really nothing they can do. We haven't even activated anything. Speaking of not activating anything, let's actually take a look and see what our defenses are. We have 40 and 50, so they're doing mainly kinetic and explosive. So a shield tank would actually be better to bring versus these guys. I'll have to remember that. So if I come out here and my shield tank fit, it would probably do much, much better. We're 54km off. You can stop that. Fire on him. Let's just do some, a couple rounds of repping. Alright, so the elite ship is now up on me. And I do believe we are going to have another wave. I could use a web or two, and we could actually get some energy back while we're here. Let's go ahead and turn on our afterburner, try to get some range going. We're 45 off. All right, how do we look? We have a lot of ships. Foo -foo -foo. And packs of elites. Okay. Let's turn this off. Drop back down to next to nothing. you, lock you, lock you, and lock you. Okay. Let's start with our tracking disruptor. And as soon as we get to 30, we'll start blowing you guys up. damage amp. That puts me at 783, just to clear out some of these elites. It lasts for a decent amount of time too. I'm gonna go for the smaller elite. And the next smaller elite. We're gonna crank up our speed. You, I'm going to web. We're going to do that and that, and we're also going to activate that, and we're going to focus fire you. In the meantime, we're going to lock you guys. Okay. Okay. 
So our armor plate did well. Now we take down you real quick. And now we take down you. And we only have a couple of more close ships left. So we're manually turning now, heading that way, we're flying across all of them which should give us more transverse velocity. I'm actually changing my target disruptor to the elite, because again the elites normally have the more deadly of the weapons. We're going to focus fire the elite and we're going to turn on our damage amplifier as well. We do have ships approaching. So we are going to approach the station again. Alright, we can use the Nosferatu, they are within range, and it looks like these are all pretty much normal ships now. We can throw on the armor wrapper for good measure. And everything seems to be holding pretty stable. I think these guys are doomed. I don't think there's any more elites. Nope, just a lot of ships. Oops. Here. Hit them one more time. There we go. Alright, and now we can start the looting process. Uh, we can use the tracking disruptor. Without there being any elites here, I mean, I don't think any of these sheep, th these ships can really do anything to us. Let's web that little dude. Just start our looting process. Uh, I don't think we need to have this guy running anymore. Yeah, 
Yeah, there's like nothing left. Got an aura warp core stabilizer. That's good. I don't know if there's any more waves after this. There is not. So that's pretty much it. This particular build um, was able to easily clear this T6 encounter. And there was never any threat whatsoever. I could have probably been a little bit more aggressive and taking this out a whole lot faster, but I tend to play a little bit safer. So now all that's left is the looting. So I guess I'm gonna go ahead and uh, clean up the rest of this pack here, and I'll come back to you guys once I'm done. Alright, <clears throat> I am back, and as you can see we've just docked at the station. We're going to go ahead and turn in the mission. 23 million. So what are we going to look at here? Come on. Alright. So we're going to start here. This was our first trek of Bounty Rewards, so I was at 390, 391 million, basically. And we finished at 420 million. So 29 million. So all in all, the particular mission was worth to me about 29 million. And if we're going to believe the number that is in our cargo hold, it's estimating I have about 28 million worth of stuff in this particular cargo hold. I wouldn't really trust that too terribly much. I mean, I believe all of these, but we can, for science, we can actually try to see. I don't really think I need any of this stuff in here. So this says it's worth 28 million, 571,612 ISK. We are currently at 420,540,639 ISK. So I should be about 400 million, 
449,000 isk. No. Yeah, 449 million isk. Sorry. After I sell all this stuff. Hmm. My base is 17 jumps away. So I'm going to go ahead and go do that. Actually... We're going to sell in Jito. Alright, but for the time being, this is going to be where I go ahead and uh, stop the video. I will make another video and see if this selling of the stuff will actually be very profitable. Alright, well, thank you for watching, and I will be back next time with probably a fitting video of my ship showing you all the different fits that I use. And we'll see if that's going to be fun for anybody. Alright.